what's up guys this is Alex from X Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list I hope everybody had a wonderful weekend um, I just had a, a pretty amazing snowboarding trip uh, just got back so I'm filming this kind of late I apologize if this comes out late but I'm um, still gonna try to give you that quality that y'all deserve so um, make sure y'all trade safe this week but let's go ahead and get it to our first setup so we're looking at Apple here um, and you can see we're looking at pretty much three uh, big tech behemoths here we're gonna Apple Microsoft and Google but for now let's start with Apple so we see we have a clear breakout on the daily um, also reclaiming June low over here so this is a uh, June 2020 low and you can see it's popping over here we also got the breakout if we go down to the four hour it looks even cleaner we got a nice volume pushing to the upside um, my guess is that Apple will be able to come up to the supply so you can shoot for about $133 a share or so. Um, so I'm going to be looking at calls on that. Um, if it does want to show that I can do more past supply, obviously you can hold longer than that. Um, usually I don't even take the time to guess if it's going to hold. I'll just sell it supply and go ahead and take that profit. Um, one thing you do have going against you, you can see the MACD is not crossed to the upside. But on SPY and QQQ, the daily MACD is crossing. Um, which is indicating a large cap shift. So it could be given an early signal for positive momentum. We'll have to see. Um, right now this breakout is fresh, so I think you could still be a little bit early for a short-term breakout to the upside. They don't report earnings till February. Um, Microsoft does report, I think, uh, maybe a little bit later in January, if I'm not mistaken. Or, I'm sorry, not in January. Um, yeah, in January, I'm sorry. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into number two. So this is Microsoft. You can see we do have a strong drop base rally demand zone. Let's see if I can get this tool here. So you get a drop base rally demand zone. Um, sequence opens up with a drop, creates a base, rallies to the upside, make your base candle um, zone. And then you can see it's coming back now to test it for the first time. Had a very nice reaction. We can see that their earnings is in January the 24th. So coming up in a couple weeks, this will be after 120 OPEX, uh, which is options expiration. Um, what I'd really like to see on Microsoft here is just uh, pretty much a pre-earnings run up, maybe come back up and fill this gap eventually that it made. Um, obviously your stop loss would need to be under demand zone low maximum, um, but we just want to see continuation directly off this zone and follow through with this reaction candle to demand. So this is a really nice drop base rally zone. This is your first test, so that could be indicating that it could be a really solid uh, reversal right off the zone. And you could see, I mean, if it didn't want to come up to the, fill the gap, obviously, you know, to fill the gap and probably find resistance about there. Um, another situation is that it can find resistance before the gap, right at the, um, you know, right at the gap low. So oh, those are just two areas to keep in mind. But otherwise, I feel like this could be a pretty good setup. Um, and you saw Apple is breaking out as well. You'll see that SPY and QQQ also um, kind of giving short-term bullish signals. And I think that could be just because these, you know, big tech behemoths are setting up pretty nicely. So we're going to go into number two. So this is Google. Similar to Microsoft, we have another drop base rally. Drop base rally demand zone pulling in um, this one is a little bit different though because it did have a couple more tests first so I had test one test them um, test number two this would be test three on the zone um, which makes it a little bit riskier because if you know the liquidity did dry up and um, it didn't just have its first test quick reaction and you can see it failed a couple times this could be indicating that the zone is not as strong but I feel like it's still got a nice reaction. You get a nice little push up on volume on Friday. Um, MACD is positive for now, although it hasn't really gotten like that nice, nice curl up yet. It's still showing, you know, that it could be indicating, a, you know, an early reversal here. Um, price target, you'd probably be looking for it to get up to this resistance at $91. Um, that's probably about as high as I could put you for now. And you can see, I mean, Q1 earnings for 23 is. Uh, it looks like Tuesday, January 31st, so a little bit after Microsoft. 
and then um, Apple obviously in February. So I guess this is kind of like um, just looking for a run up, you know, up into the you know earnings report. Uh, and you'll, you'll see that pattern a lot with a lot of them. Like if we went to Microsoft here, back again, you can see uh, there's a pre-earnings run up here before selling off. Um, there's a little pre-earnings run up here before selling off. Uh, there's a small pop here, uh, pre-earnings. And then there was a nice little rally, uh, maybe for like a couple days before um, rallying after earnings. But I mean, you can see, here's another one. Uh, there's, a, there's a pattern to run up in the you know prior few weeks to earnings it will go ahead and you know catch some momentum so i'm hoping with these big tech names you know we'll start seeing that and maybe start seeing a little rebalance to the upside um assuming that the indexes want to stay in a you know a good uh in a good signal as well because it's not just about individual tickers you know you do want to pay attention to the indexes as well um so yeah google looking pretty nice here I want to see it run up to $91 as a max uh, price target. And uh, yeah, all kind of the, a similar gist. Apple is breaking out of the downtrend. You can see Microsoft and Google are not breakout trades. They are counter trend reversal trades off demand. But either way, we're looking at calls on Apple. We're looking at calls on Microsoft. And we're looking at calls on Google as well. So this could be good. Um, it's been a while since I had, you know, three big tech names, you know, as my focus. So it could be interesting, and even the indexes are showing that that could support the thesis. So next, we'll go into XLF. So I was a little hesitant on adding this one just because this breakout candle is so big, right? But um, we do have a pretty clear uh, runway here up to 35.90 as a first price target, and then a second one figures through that at you know 36s. And uh, MACD is crossing to the upside still. Um, the only thing is with a you know bullish candle this big, you might get a couple days you know of consolidation first. It might you know go back and forth, make a base or whatever, then try to go up. Um, it might not just be instant. So maybe you know just look out on Monday. Make sure you know it's holding proper levels. You know maybe enter on a dip instead of just buying straight into it. I mean if we went into um, the short-term time frames you can see I mean the 15 minute uh, RSI is pretty overbought uh, if we go to the one hour it's pretty overbought so this may have a, a small dip first um, so you do want to look for maybe look for a dip first on this and then you know maybe it can run up into the resistance areas because there's really um, only this one little supply here so this is a drop based drop supply zone that is something to worry about so you can probably you know maybe take profit there if you're catching a day trade um, swing trade, obviously this wouldn't give the most risk, risk to reward unless you went for the 36 high. Uh, if you're just doing a day trade, the supply would be a good target. Um, of course, if you get that dip or if you see something support the Friday high get taken out, you know, anything like that um, would be good for a move up to supply. So yeah, um, pretty clean breakout. Um, volume is pretty mediocre, but MACD is crossing up. Uh, you just have that one little small supply right there where it had a huge reaction So that's why I would say you probably want to take profit there on a day trade if it did get up there um, Maybe even if it pull in the supply here and give a nice reversal candle on the daily You could look at puts short term just because this reversal right here and this imbalance is so gnarly um, After testing it, it, it could be worth a watch. So but Yeah, focus on that's calls um, We're gonna have four call setups this week Obviously, I'm open to changing that. Y'all know I'll, I'll trade whatever direction. It doesn't really matter. Um, but next, I did keep one potential put trade um, just because, you know, the bear in me says, you know, this is not over. And just because these bullish setups are setting up doesn't mean anything. So uh, next, we'll go into the SQ. So this is Block Technologies, uh, Block Inc., whatever you want to call it. So this is originally Square, by the way. Um, you know, they held like Bitcoin and, you know, they do processing payments and stuff like that. So um, with SQ here, uh, I would say the downtrend is pretty clear. Um, this would only be two tests. So you got test one, test two, which means you could have an opportunity at the third test for a rejection. Um, that would give a, you know, a good uh, put trade. Um, if it did want to break out though, uh, the only thing is, 
if you did look at calls in the breakout, it would be going straight into supply where it could see resistance. Um, they would have to clear the supply to even get up to this supply up in the, you know, 75s. Um, so essentially what I did, since it hasn't tapped, you know, price for price yet, it hasn't tapped the downtrend line, I went ahead and added an alert. So y'all know how we do it. You just right click the line, you just, you know, hit add alert and um, we could just put, you know, downtrend line. So we're waiting for that to tap. Um, and I do still have some alerts active from last week too, uh, like EEM. I mean, you could probably delete that one just because the head and shoulders, it looks like it got invalidated. EEM had a huge bounce off the neckline area. So head and shoulders is not good on that one anymore. Um, HD, it did break for a brief second, but didn't give good confirmation. So I'm, I've kept that one just in case that head and shoulders does want to play out. But um, otherwise, I mean, I would leave that, you know, leave that alert. Maybe keep looking for HD to break that neckline maybe, and you'll have a put trade still, you know, from last week that hasn't triggered yet. Um, so same thing with this. We're going to set the alert. We're going to wait. Um, if it does want to trigger this week, we can, you know, maybe potentially trade it. If it doesn't, you know, it'll carry over into next week maybe. So um, more, more than likely, this is going to get tested though. I mean, look at this big bullish candle. It's really close. Um, it's more likely going to give you a rejection around the area. Um, even if it doesn't tap it directly, it still could uh, show you a rejection in the general area and that will give you a confirmation for puts. So yeah, SQ looks decent. Um, and like I said, if it does want to break out, calls could be risky just because it's heading straight into supply. Although, um, you know, Square does like to squeeze uh, the shorts, short term. So, yeah, so Apple looking at calls, Microsoft looking at calls, Google looking at calls. You got your three big tech behemoths. You got XLF, a uh, little breakout trade. You might want to wait for a dip on that one just because the breakout candle was so big. And then SQ, obviously, we're going to be waiting for uh, a confirmed rejection first before taking anything. So just like last week, um, you know, we had two setups that were waiting for alerts on, uh, but didn't trigger, so we didn't take them. So sometimes it happens. It's okay. Um, that's why we have others to fall back on if, you know, those aren't working. And also, you can just trade the SPY in QQQ. Uh, I just day trade a lot. So, like, I'll day trade the SPY. Um, you know, it... Usually I'll kind of like trade against my swing trade. So like if I have, you know, long calls on something, I'll still trade spy puts uh, and, you know, it'll offset some of the losses if, I'm, you know, in the wrong direction. And, um, you know, those day trade profits, you know, do build up and um, it can help you kind of put out some fires if, you know, maybe you're wrong on a swing trade or um, maybe you're still waiting for it to play out. You can still build up some profits even though you're waiting. So, yeah, next we'll go into the spy. Um, Pretty much had a range week except for on friday and why was that it was because we had non-farm payrolls and we also had unemployment data come out we also had something showing that um wage growth was slowing so really interesting day on friday um i think what another thing that triggered it was the ism uh manufacturing data it came in showing a, a contraction we'll even go to the 15 minute i think this is when the ism data came out probably like 10 o'clock got this huge bullish candle and then after that i mean the sky was the limit so maybe the ism data played a part too uh and not even just you know the non-farm payrolls you know you can't really i guess you can't really pinpoint the market to only one specific reason why it did something so um we did have multiple factors we had non-farm payrolls we had unemployment data we had um some wage data showing you know uh, slowing growth and then we also had the ism manufacturing showing a little bit of contraction so there's your four reasons right there um, maybe that just shows that people are optimistic that the Fed is um, indeed uh, their, you know, their policy is working and, you know, inflation is coming down. We do have CPI this week coming up. Um, if we go to the economic calendar, we do have CPI on Thursday, January 12th. So mark it in your calendar. It's going to be crazy. Um, this is our first CPI report of 23 and it really could dictate the pace of uh, starting out this year. So. But yeah, so SPY here, we do have the demand zone. Same thing as the last two weeks. You can see we've been tapping in it. Um, but finally, it started to create sort of like a little wedge, right? And um, we were highlighting this wedge all week in the chat and the Discord. Um, it finally broke out. So it looks pretty good uh, for bulls. One thing the bulls do need um, is to get over this 39014, which is really important. So 39014 is your November support. We'll go type it in real quick. 
So you got November support. Um, obviously, it would need to follow through, breaking over, make a base on previous support, and then maybe head up into the 200 EMA. You also do have MACD crossing to the upside. Um, the RSI is staying above 40. I'm sure the KDJ is also curled. Um, I don't have the KDJ, KDJ on this week just because we're, we're in a chopped range and the KDJ kept giving false signals. Um, you usually want the KDJ for nice trends. So maybe we can put it back on when this thing starts to um, maybe catch some upside if it wants to. But anyways, so we want to see it give over to 390 obviously. Um, bulls, I'm sorry, bears, you do have an argument maybe. It will reject previous support and make new resistance of 390. Maybe head back down, who knows. Um, if you do see some major selling at 390, obviously that could give you that signal that it, you know, it's not clearing and it, it's really just back testing previous support and could come back down. But for now, I would say this bear flag um, that people were, you know, speculating on is pretty much invalidated. Uh, it's no good anymore. So throw that out. Um, you do have a pennant breakout here. So I would say short term, this is like a bullish, to be honest. Um, and you know the market it'll it'll fake you out it'll th it'll take everything you think you know and throw it in your face and totally light it on fire so um you just want to be careful just because it broke out doesn't mean it's not a guarantee but this is looking a little bit more bullish so if you're bearish i would be careful with that um but otherwise yeah so this 390.14 is your level of focus and that's really it um, if it does want to reclaim 30, uh, 390.14 your next price target be the 200 ema on the daily Next, we're looking at QQQ. So held 259 support very cleanly. Um, you do have a kind of like a little weak demand zone right here. Um, this would be like a drop base rally, I guess, but yeah, you didn't really see much of a drop base rally follow through, but um, either way, it doesn't really matter. You do have support here at 359, or I'm sorry, 259. Now, um, the only thing I don't like about this is that QQQ is heading straight into supply. So you do have a drop base drop supply zone. Um, I could even draw it out for you. So it's just, you know, opens the sequence opens up with strong selling, creates a base, and then drops more to the downside. And that's your follow through. Um, so you got a complete sequence there. And now it's coming up for a test. Um, this could see some short term resistance. So for the QQQ, I would want to see it get through supply. Um, looking at the Apple, the Microsoft, and the Google, uh, there's pretty good counter trend reversals off the man going there. So um, maybe, you know, that that could help it gas it up a little bit um, as well as the the 10 year yields coming down that helped a lot. I think the 10 year yields closed down maybe almost 5% on Friday. So that could help tech catch a rally. Um, there's going to be a lot of people trying to catch back up and um, maybe try to get, you know, a better start to their year, uh, especially with tech after getting slammed all year. Um, maybe there is some buyers starting to show up here. But otherwise, on the, on the QQQ specifically, minus the you know the ones we covered, I feel like there really isn't anything specific. Um, SPY, you have a good argument to like look at calls and stuff because you have that pennant breakout. I guess if we went to the four hour here and you you know drew a trend line here, you do have a short term breakout. So that could be good. You know, um, we'll have to see. If, uh, if it does, I mean, it, it, keep in mind, it does go straight into supply. So personally, me, I wouldn't take the QQQ. Um, I wouldn't take calls straight into this because just because of that supply, I'd want to wait for it to get over supply and then um, be able to look at calls. And, you know, that could cost me some money, but, I mean, there's other call setups I'm looking at. So I'm not really focused on the QQQ this week just because that supply is in the way and I would like to catch some upside. Um, assuming we get the right confirmation so yeah and you also have this downtrend line um, you can see you got test one test two test three uh, it did break if it comes back up that you know that back test could act as resistance just like that as well as supply so um, just like what I was saying last week I believe you just want to see QQQ uh, pretty much you know reclaim the trend line show that you know it, it doesn't even matter that we broke it and totally invalidate and you know it could squeeze and maybe the supply wouldn't even matter then either because it's reclaiming over the trend line so yeah that's qqq nothing specific watch out for supply and trend line 
Next, we'll go into the IWM. So this is the IWM, this is the small mid caps. Um, it looks like it, similar to SPY, you know, we were focusing on this pennant. Uh, I said Bears had a good argument for rejecting uh, on Tuesday when we opened and they could maybe trade puts and it did that for about a day. Uh, then we got really sensitive to the FOMC minutes and you can see, I mean, we had like some rallies and some dips and some rallies and some dips. And then finally, when Friday's data came out, non-farm payrolls, unemployment, etc., uh, we were finally able to break out of that pennant. So pretty much uh, the bears were done for after that. After putting up a really good fight in this range, by the way, um, it's not me discrediting anybody. I, I even got some put trades in, and it was pretty nice. Um, the range was fun while it lasted. I'm hoping that we're finally going to get out of it. I would like to see a little bit more bigger moves. So. Uh, with the IWM here, it is breaking out, similar to SPY, breaking out of the pennant. Um, you really have, don't have any supply in the way here. Um, this is all sell inbound. So you got a huge red candle, huge red candle, huge red candle, no bullish base candles indicating supply. Um, so that could give maybe a room, uh, get some room up to the 200 EMA. Uh, so that probably puts you about like 184 or something. Uh, as long as it gets over this 50 EMA, you can see that it's still lighting up red. That means we haven't gotten over it yet. If we do get over it on the daily, you do have a great argument for that 184 at the 200 EMA. Um, I would put you as high as 187, but you know we, just, we are still under the moving averages, so you kind of have to use those as price targets. Um, assuming that you know resistance is all the way up here, it could just be better to go off the moving averages, just because you know it does respect them. And you can see when I got over the 50 here, nice shot up. Um, got over the 50 again, nice little shoot up. Uh, got over the 50, hit the 200, strong resistance at 200, strong resistance at 200, strong resistance at 200. So yeah, I mean, it's respecting them. So we wanna see get over the 50, head into the 200, just like that. But yeah, so you do have the pennant breakout supporting that. And um, pretty much made a new support at 170. You can see a strong wick here. Uh, another reversal here to nice little 170 build up um never hit 168 so there is support here it never hit but um it was able to make support early oh as well as uh, we reclaimed that 174 11 so that was a huge level um this uh it, it, uh, this area right here here let me circle it for you so this area right here is a pretty big support. Um, we, we covered it the last few weeks. We were kind of just chopping around it, but once we broke it, you, you get quick flushes, or once it broke over, you get a nice pops to the upside. And you can see that just, that happened all week. So once it got under, you got a big flush. Once it got back over, you can see the momentum starting to pick back up. Finally, we are over 174.11, and we're breaking out of the pennant. And we broke out of this 176.80 uh, peak right here. So yeah, IWM looks good. I'd say this looks bullish. Uh, look for a move up into the 200 EMA maximum. Next, we'll go into the VIX. So the VIX uh, essentially pretty much stayed in a similar area um, as the Friday close. So this was the Friday close. Uh, it gapped up pretty heavy on Tuesday, but um, finally on Friday it closed down almost 6%, which is great. It still hasn't hit my 1994 level that I've been focusing on. Um, as it came up to test the 2022 the 23 23 average close and you'll see um, in the data here I am just carrying over I am just carrying over um, pretty much the 2022 average close into 2023 so since we started raising rates in 2022 and volatility is like a, at a completely different level than it's ever been we're gonna go ahead and carry this average into next year so we do have our weekly new um, new numbers here so you got um on the first trading day of 23 you got 2289 uh on the fourth it was 22 flat on the fifth 2245 on the sixth 2114 so all we're doing is just carrying it over which gives us a average of 2562 and that's for 2022 and the new 2023 numbers um and you'll see i mean i, I did start working on a uh i pretty much started working on a, a, a 2023 solo as well just so I can track it, but we don't have enough for that yet. Um, it doesn't even matter. Unless we get like 20 days of closes, it's not really gonna give you anything significant, to be honest. Um, so yeah, 
I just wanted to show you that we are carrying over that average into the new year. So yeah, um, you can see it's pulling into this trend line. I would say that the bears do have an argument that this could hold up. Um, but the way that the indexes are looking, they are breaking out. Uh, so this does put the VIX, maybe um, this does put the VIX a little bit lower. And I'm guessing it's gonna test that 19. Uh, you also have the dollar, you can see it's already getting slammed when it's a Sunday night. Uh, so that, that could make equities rally. But uh, we'll get into that next. So yeah, uh, right now, I'm guessing it's gonna fall into the 19s, uh, upper 19s, maybe 20 flat. And honestly, if it got even lower than that to this peak or around it, I'd probably start looking at put swings on the spot. Just because, um, I mean, that's showing, you know, uh, puts are super cheap, especially when, you know, the 2022 20, average close for the VIX is all the way up here. This is pretty much measuring 30 days um, of implied volatility. And um, this is pretty much your average. Anything over, you're overpaying on a premium. Anything under, you can look at it as a discount. Um, but obviously, you can see it's still mid-range, so I would like to maybe wait to grab puts until it actually hits like a key level. Um, so that would be 1994 or uh, 1895 or 19 flat, something like that. Um, so right now we're gonna see this trend line break if you're bullish, if you're bearish, obviously you have an argument that it could curl up here. Uh, it's still trading all the under moving averages. You can see Tuesday hit the 50 EMA, rejected straight off, filled this little gap. Um, yeah, but otherwise, I mean, volatility is pretty much stuck in a range for now uh, with a great close on Friday indicating uh, bullish momentum just because it got slammed. So yeah, same focus levels as before. This time there's just a new trend line to watch. Um, so it could curl up about here. Um, if it breaks, that could give it, you know, velocity to the downside, thus resulting in, you know, velocity to the upside for stocks. We'll have to see. So yeah. Um, oh, you could also even maybe draw one right here. Not that you really need to chart the VIX or anything, because uh, it's, it's not like tradable other than the options. Uh, obviously it's not an underlying, uh, it doesn't have a tradable underlying you're just trading the options or whatever um but most people are just using this for an indicator but still i mean it does follow you know the indicator is pretty good it follows the moving average is good um you'll see it hold up at trend lines good you'll see it hold up at key levels really good regardless and that could just be you know um just based off algorithms and also uh if you didn't know the vix is just made up of uh spx options so um, the SPX options could also play a role once it gets to a peak. Uh, once you know algorithms see it get to a peak, they might you know start changing the SPX options in their favor to where it'll start to curl up or you know break down at the support level. So next we'll go into the DXY. So this is the dollar index, US dollar. Last week we were just focused on the 103.44 support. Um, it did hold up there massively. Had a huge rally. Um, and then ran into the 200 EMA. Obviously, that's been also been a level of focus for us. Uh, as I said, if you're bearish, you would need it to get over the 200 EMA, make a base off there to go higher. It was not able to do that. Uh, you can see it made support off the 200 here, made support off the 200 here. Once it finally got under the 200, big velocity to the downside, came back up to test 200 again, more downside, created some support. And this is where we were at last week. So uh, we closed down here. Last Friday, uh, this is where we opened up Tuesday with a one point, what's that? One point one five percent to the upside. So a huge day for the bears. Um, big day for the currency bulls. Huge day for you know equity bears because um, this, I mean, that's a pretty big move. So I mean, I'm sure it spooked a lot of people. Let's see what it was on that Tuesday. So that Tuesday. Uh, it did have uh, about a half a percent down, but it did go all the way down to 377. So I do remember that day being pretty bearish and also the dollar was indicating a uh, pretty bearish movement, but we did stay in the range. So it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But yeah, same level of focus this week, this 103.44. If you're bullish on stocks, you wanna see it get under that. Um, we'll even remove this. Go, I'll show you the same level we looked at last week. So we looked at this, um, this 2020 COVID high uh, at 102.99, you could just say 103 flat. Uh, that's going to need to hold up if you're bearish. If you're bullish, you want to see it get under that. Because otherwise, you could see it, you know, curl up, make a base. Um, or uh, if it flushes under, that could be really good for stocks. 
So this is a huge level to be honest. I, I really feel like this is a big level and if it gets under, um, it could be good for stocks. If it continues to curl up and show its resilience, then it's not gonna be good for stocks. So that 103 level is obviously still in focus um, with a 103.44 short term that we just, uh, pretty much that I just deleted so I can make the chart cleaner. I'll read at it again. It's the same level as last week. Uh, yeah, 103.40s. So you wanna see the dollar get under that. And um, yeah, especially you wanna see a continued rally. And also you wanna see the VIX, you know, following suit, selling off with the dollar. Uh, that's, and yields too. You wanna see the 10 year yields going down a little bit lower, um, indicating, you know, that people aren't as scared. And uh, that'll also bring bonds a little bit higher, but I feel like the bond rallies have been pretty good for stocks lately, um, depending on, you know, the sentiment. Does it seem like it's a flight to safety bid in the bonds? Or does it seem like it's just, uh, just because, you know, rates are coming down and, um, you know, people are optimistic that, you know, stocks are rallying with bonds. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I'm gonna go ahead and get it uh, chopped up, recorded. I love you guys. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our Extra's YouTube channel and trade safe.